hello everyone and welcome to another chess video where Stockfish 8 plays Alpha Zero and this game has been dubbed the Raking Bishops due to Black's activity with the two bishops against the White King. The game starts off very traditionally but then we soon encounter some complications and it's a very interesting game and very entertaining. Here we're going to look at it from the Black perspective. Here Alpha Zero is Black against Stockfish 8 who is White and the game starts off Quite traditionally you'll probably recognize this opening e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 and stockfish plays bishop c4 and knight f6 from alpha zero knight g5 and straight away this is the two knights where white now attacks this f7 pawn and this is all theory now so d5 to attack the bishop e takes d5 and now knight a5 to force the c4 bishop away White drops in a check first though, and after c6, d takes c6, b takes c6, the bishop is forced away. Now I won't go into too much theory here, but White can actually drop the bishop back to e2 or f1 if they want. But in this case, Stockfish decides to drop the bishop back to d3. And now Alpha Zero plays knight d5. So the idea is to attack the g5 knight, and at some point play knight to f4 to attack this d3 bishop. Stockfish drops their knight back to f3 attacking this e5 pawn and bishop d6 now to defend from alpha zero. Stockfish castles and alpha zero plonks their knight onto f4 attacking the bishop on d3 and threatening to double the d pawns. This move also effectively sacrifices the e5 pawn because after rook e1 knight takes d3, c takes d3, alpha zero just castles and gives up this e5 pawn and after knight takes e5 alpha zero is just trying to open up lines here. So first off it plays c5 now to stop d4 and stop white from solidifying that knight on e5 basically. Stockfish develops with knight c3 and as we see now bishop b7 from alpha 0. Alpha 0 now has these two raking bishops attacking this king side. So white's got to be very careful because black could build up an easy attack here with ideas like queen h4. White's also in a very unusual position because these two pawns on d2 and d3 aren't very strong and are susceptible to an attack as well. In this type of position, knight to f3 could be played. After knight c6, we see again that white's got these two bad pawns to deal with. And I think black's actually doing much better. I think if it was human versus human, you'd probably prefer black here. I think black's got more of the chances. In the game though, Stockfish now played b3, trying to develop this c1 bishop. And rook e8 from alpha 0, attacking this knight on e5. Knight c4 is played, so trying to swap off pieces. And alpha 0 obliges with knight takes c4. And you may be thinking, well that was just a terrible move, surely, because now white can just play d takes c4. But actually, this loses to queen h4, so black gets a really amazing attack now. Attacking h2. And if g3, black can actually play bishop takes g3 now. And if f takes g3, queen d4 check and white's in a lot of trouble. The only square is to move the king to f1. And after queen f6 check, king g1, bishop f3, white's in a terrible position. The queen's attacked and the rook's attacked at the same time. If the queen moves to c2 here, we just capture the rook. So pretty much white's probably gonna be forced to play rook takes e8. And after rook takes e8, rook e1 is coming. And of course, if queen f1, black can just play a move like queen d4 and if queen f2 just play rook to e1 check and that's checkmate actually and game over for white so here white's got to be very careful in the game stockfish took on e8 check and queen takes e8 again so what happens here if now white captures d takes c4 well actually queen e5 is really strong attacking h2 again and after g3, rook e8, queen e1 is threatened with checkmate. So bishop a3. And now black plays h5. Black's actually down two pawns, but the position is given as equal. So I believe alpha 0 has quite a good attack with these two bishops. And again, if it was human versus human, I'd probably favour black in this position. h4 is coming, and I feel like black has a lot of active play. And it's probably easier to play for black. In the game though, Stockfish actually took 
the knight with the b-pawn, so b takes c4. And again, it's still got the problem of these two weak b-pawns. And now black has these two raking bishops. Alpha zero now plays queen e6, getting the queen into a better position. Bishop b2 from Stockfish. And rook b8 now from alpha zero. So threatening this b2 bishop with a discovered attack. So here Stockfish doesn't actually notice any problems with their king side. And they actually play knight to b5 here. So trying to win the a7 pawn. So essentially Stockfish has gone pawn grabbing and trying to win this pawn on a7. And if alpha zero now plays a move like a6 to try and keep the pawn, knight takes d6, queen takes and queen g4 is really good for stockfish and white's winning this position so we can't do that as black so after knight b5 alpha 0 launches their own attack with queen g6 threatening mate on g2 so threatening mate's really good because white now has to defend so they play queen f1 to defend it and bishop f4 is played to move the bishop away from that knight on b5 stockfish captures on a7 and now they're actually three pawns up. So this is quite intense. Again, we see another game where Alpha Zero has now given up so many pawns to the attack. It's quite impressive, really. And even this next move is really interesting. Alpha Zero actually plays a calm move H6 here, giving their king space so there's no back rank mates and just preparing for the attack. And now Stockfish plays Bishop C3, protecting the D2 pawn, leaving their knight on A7. Preparing rook b1 maybe to try and trade rooks off, which is all very logical. But now alpha 0 finally gets into the attack. They play queen h5, threatening mate on h2. Stockfish now plays h3. And Stockfish's idea is actually to play queen to d1 and queen to g4 and try and trade queens off. If uh, Stockfish managed to achieve this, it would be doing very well indeed. But Alpha Zero now plays another very active move. They get their last piece into the game with Rook to A8, attacking the Knight and also preparing Rook A6, and then Rook to G6 where it can join the attack on the King side. So before I go into the game, let's see what happens if White now plays Knight to B5. Well, if Knight B5, Alpha Zero would have an amazing move now. Black can actually play Bishop to F3 here, stopping Queen D1 ideas. And now unleashing this rook to a6 to g6 to get into the attack. If white now takes on f3, then black can just play rook a6. And again, the threats are incredible. If king h1, just rook g6. And now black's threatening to take on h3 and f3 with checkmate. And that's pretty much game over and all she wrote. So if the bishop f3, white can't take this. Rook e1 is an idea, but again, Rook a6 can be played, and then g3 is the best defence. Rook g6 now pinning the pawn, and if king h2, black can actually play an incredible move, just queen h4. So they're all ganging up on this g3 pawn. Uh, and after rook e8 check, king h7 and queen e1 to sort of save this g3 pawn. Amazingly, black can actually just play rook g5 here, so what the hell is going on? Well, you'll see, after rook e5, and f5. Black's plan is simple, it's just to play queen takes h3, sacrificing the queen, and then play rook h5, checkmate. And there's nothing white can do about this. It's actually an incredible position with four pieces in the attack at the same time. So after knight b5, bishop f3, the best defense is actually g3. And now rook a6, and again g takes f4 here would be terrible. So king h2 is the best defence, and then of course just queen h4 again. And if queen g1 to try and defend, again black goes in with the same plan, rook g6. They have to move like bishop a5, they can just play rook g5 again. And now if bishop d8, just play f6 to defend. And again this plan is simple, just play queen takes h3 and rook h5 checkmate, and it's game over for white. So... This is the reason why Stockfish didn't play knight b5 because the attack is just too incredible for black. Of course, after knight b5, black couldn't just play rook a6 straight away due to queen d1. Because after queen g6, white can play queen g4. And Stockfish would have a fine game where they're just going to trade queens and just be three pawns up. So black can't go in for this. 
That's why bishop f3 was the absolute key in this position. But I know what you're thinking. Maybe after h3, why did black have to play rook a8 here? Why can't he just play bishop to f3 straight away and stop queen d1? Well, they can't play bishop f3 here because rook e1 can be played. And after a move like rook b6, trying to play rook g6, the knight on a7 is actually better placed than the knight on b5 because he can play knight to c8, attacking the rook. And of course, if rook g6 here, just knight to e7, where it's forking the king and the rook. So incredibly, black actually needs to play knight b5 first before bishop f3 can be played. These are some very complicated variations and I would recommend just having a look at the game. I'll post the notation in the description below. So ultimately here, knight b5 would lead to a terrible position. So Stockfish now sacrifices the knight on a7 because it realizes how terrible its position is and plays queen to d1 first, trying to trade queens off. Obviously Stockfish has three extra pawns, but against black's position, it doesn't really appear to be that much because these d-pawns are really terrible for white. So let's just have a look what happened in the rest of the game. Stockfish protected the pawn and now after a4, Stockfish and Alpha Zero traded rooks and Alpha Zero just plays nicely, puts all their pawns on black squares and slowly maneuvers just to win all these extra pawns. So h5, bishop c2 now attacking this pawn, king e2, king c6, bishop moves and now bishop d6. Stockfish plays d4, trying to undo these d pawns, but after c takes d4, d3, it's pretty much game over because these pawns are incredibly weak and susceptible to these two bishops. King e2, King a6 and bishop d8 and bishop f5 here. Stockfish resigned or it was adjudicated that Stockfish loses. And yeah, it's pretty much game over. I think black's plan now is just to walk this king around the board if it can. And gang up on this weak d3 pawn. And I don't, don't see any way for white to counteract this. And of course if um, they ever trade bishops, it's game over for white. So this was a really nicely played game by Alpha Zero. Obviously the key position seems to be here where Stockfish went pawn grabbing and h6 is played and bishop c3. But after queen h5 it's too little too late. This defense does no longer work. And after rook a8, Stockfish is just losing. They've got to give up the knight. And if they play knight b5 as we discussed, black gets an amazing attack. Again, I'd recommend you go through those variations. They're, they're incredible. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please drop a like or a comment if you did. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.